Chapter 17, Business Math for Pharmacy Technicians. Skip over the terms and definitions and we'll cover them throughout the chapter. And then at the beginning, we have the pretest again. If you're comfortable with the subject matter, go ahead and pretest yourself. If not, you can work through the chapter and return to them for extra practice. So this is nothing you should need to turn in unless it's on Canvas for you. Pharmacy technicians in retail settings as well as in hospital settings may be involved with business calculations. For a business to remain profitable, the net income or net profit from the sales of medications must exceed the cost of doing business. Mathematical calculations, including using percentages to divide discounts and markups, as well as addition and subtraction to maintain the necessary inventory par levels. An adequate markup must be in place so the receipts of the business are in excess of the expenses and the supply of inventory must be adequate to cover demand, but not so excessive that it ties up the cash flow of the business. Monitoring of pricing and inventory, as well as obtaining necessary inventory levels, can be a task for the pharmacy technician. The cash flow of the pharmacy is directly related to the mathematical calculations performed for inventory and profit that are calculated routinely. A pharmacy technician may have a major role in inventory control and reordering, which affects turnover rate and gross and net income of profit. Overhead is the actual cost of doing business. It includes all costs for the pharmacy, such as salary, license, equipment purchases, repairs, depreciation, utilities, telephone, insurance, taxes paid, like employers, payroll taxes, and rent. Overhead does not include the cost of inventory. Depreciation is a rate re representing the decrease in value of an asset over time. So for example, you purchase a computer for $1,000, which is intended to be used full for five years. The amount to depreciate is $1,000 taken over five years. If the depreciation were taken as an equal value over all five years, the amount would be $200 per year. And then we have this formula that we'll use to do example 7.1. Example 17.1. So to calculate overhead, we need to total all of the business expenses, which is um, everything excluding our inventory. So a pharmacy spends $12,585 for inventory a week. Again, we don't care about that, so we're not going to add that up. Our salaries are $12,500. The rent is 1600 per month. Utilities cost 800 per month. In addition, the cost of insurance is 1000 per month and depreciation on equipment is 2500 per month. Taxes are 2400 per month. What is the overhead for the week? So once we add all that up and um, the ones that were given to us in month, we need to just divide them by four weeks. We get a total of $14,375 per week of total overhead. Okay, we're just gonna skip over those problems. You again can do them for your own practice. The markup amount is the difference in the purchase cost of the drug and the selling price of the same drug. The formula is as follows. Markup equals selling price minus purchase cost. Markup rates on brand name drugs are generally lower than the markup rate on generics. For instance, if a brand name antibiotic such as Keflex costs $100 and it has a 6% markup. So right there, it shows you how to do that problem. It's going to be $6. The cost of the to the customer is $106. A generic for the same drug, cephalexin, may cost $40 with a 25% markup. So the cost to the customer is $50. Pharmacies have higher profit margins available with generics than they do with brand name drugs. All right, we'll do this example. Example 17.2. 
a prescription sells for $35.60 and the cost is $29.90. What is the markup? So if you look up here, we have our formula. The markup is equal to the selling price minus the purchase cost. So the selling price is $35.60. Purchase cost is $29.90. You subtract those and you get the answer of $5.70. The markup percentage or gross margin is calculated by dividing the markup by the cost and then multiplying by 100. Markup percentages provide information about which prescription medications have the greatest percentage of profit. The formula is as follows. So we'll use that to do example 17.3. Example 17.3, a medication costs the pharmacy $29.90 and is sold for $35.60. What is the markup percentage? So this is a kind of example, exactly like example 17.2, all the information is the same. The formula we're going to use is different. It's going to be the markup percentage is equal to the markup divided by the purchase cost times 100. So we're first going to want to take care of the um, parentheses. <laughs> so we get five hundred or $5.70 divided by $29.90. And they got that from the markup, remember from the last problem, the 35.60 minus 29.90 is 5.70. So the 5.70 is in the markup divided by the purchase cost, which is $29.90. And then we're going to uh, divide that and then multiply that by 100. And we get 19%. A discount or markdown may be applied to prescriptions over-the-counter drugs or other merchandise. The markdown price is calculated by subtracting a discount percentage, a percentage of the original selling price of the item, which lowers the price that the customer pays. Discounts and markdowns are used as an incentive to encourage customers to purchase items by realizing a savings on the original selling or retail price. Markdowns and discounts may be in the form of manufacturer's coupons or special discounts for reasons such as senior citizens initiatives. The amount of the discount is always placed on the selling price, not on the cost of the item. The item must be marked up for sale first, and then a discount can be applied. A discount decreases the sales price. Markup is based on the pharmacy's purchase price. The formulas for discounts are as follows. So we have the discount amount is equal to the selling price times the discount percentage. And then we have the discounted price is equal to the selling price minus the discount amount. So when discounts are given based on manufacturer or other coupons, the amount of the coupon should be subtracted from the selling price and the coupon placed in the cash drawer to be used at the end of the day to balance the cash drawer. And we'll do example 17.4. Example 17.4, a medication that sells for $45 has a manufacturer's coupon for 15% off as an incentive to try the medication. What is the cost of the patient after the use of the discount? Hint, change the percentage to a decimal number for each calculation. So 15% into a decimal. How do we do that? We drop the percent sign and put the number over 100. We then take our calculator and go 15 divided by 100, which gives us 0 0.15. <laughs> then we take the amount, $45, and times that by 0 0.15, we get the amount of $6.75. So that's how much they're going to save. So $45 minus $6.75, they are going to pay $38.25. That is the cost of the patient after the use of the discount coupon. The gross income, sometimes referred to as gross profit, is the difference in the sales price and the cost of the inventory with no other expenses of the business considered. This usually is calculated for the total income of the business. Gross income equals sales minus cost of inventory.
All right, and we'll do example 17.5. Example 17.5, if pharmacy sales were $200,000 and if its purchases were $175,000, its gross profit would be $25,000. So you can see from the um, formula up here, gross income is equal to the sales minus the cost of inventory. Net income, sometimes referred to as the bottom line or net profit, is the gross profit minus the overhead. It is the difference between the sales and all of the costs related to the business, which is inventory and overhead. A positive net income is necessary for the business to remain fiscally sound. Example 17.6, a pharmacy has monthly sales of 425000 Inventory purchases of 310000 Salaries and wages of 60000 Utilities of 2500 Insurance of 1100 And maintenance of 775 What is the gross income? So that's sales minus inventory costs. So the sales were 425000 The inventory purchases were 310000 So the gross income is $115,000. What is the overhead for the month? All expenses, including inventory. So we added up the salary and wages. The utilities, the insurance and maintenance, which was $64,375. What is the net income? That's the gross income minus the overhead. So the gross income was the $115,000 we found in the first part minus the 64,375 that we found in the next part, which gives us $50,625. Insurance or third-party reimbursement plays a major role in a pharmacy's income. The pharmacy signs contracts with insurance carriers for predetermined reimbursement amounts that may be specific to a medication or calculated based on the average wholesale price. To receive reimbursement, a pharmacy submits a claim electronically. On receipt of the claim, the insurance company processes it according to the terms of the contract, supplies the pharmacy with the proper amount to charge the customer, and submits reimbursement, a process called adjudication. Most third-party re reimbursements are based on average wholesale price, markup or markdown rates, and a dispensing fee. AWP is based on the national average cost of medication purchased from a wholesale market. A pharmacy may not actually pay AWP for medications because discounts are provided to pharmacies that order large quantities of drugs or for payments of invoices within a spe specified time. Fast-selling medications are often ordered in large quantities to obtain these discounts, thus increasing the profit on prescriptions. Today, most patients have third-party payers, which are insurance companies, that reimburse the pharmacy for their prescription. In many instances, insurance companies provide reimbursement based on AWP plus a percentage of AWP, which is noted as AWP plus a percentage of AWP. In other instances, reimburse, reimbursement is based on AWP less a percentage of AWP, which is noted as AWP minus the percentage of AWP. Applying a markdown to a prescription uses the same process as offering a discount. Applying a markup is the opposite. To apply a discount, multiply the discount percent in decimal form by the AWP and subtract the discount from the discount amount from the AWP. To apply a markup, multiply the markup percent in decimal form by the AWP and add this markup amount to the AWP. Dispensing fees may vary by insurance companies and medications prescribed depending on the contract. The fees are a means of providing reimbursement for overhead expenses. So then we use this formula, these formulas, and we'll do example 17.7. Example 17.7, AWP for a drug is $64 for a 30-day supply. The insurance percentage is 
15%. So we're going to turn that 15% into a decimal, which we've done in a previous problem that comes up to 0 0.15. So $64 times 0 0.15 is $9.60. The professional or dispensing fee is $3. And then you will add up the $64, the $9.60, the $3, and the reimbursement is $76.60. Example 17.8, a pharmacy purchases 1,000 tablets of medication at the wholesale price of $112. The wholesale distributor allows a 10% discount on invoices paid within 10 days. The payment is made according to the discount. The AWP for the medication is $140 for 1,000 tablets. Insurance reimbursement is AWP less minus 5% plus, 5 plus a $5 dispensing fee. A prescription is written for 60 tablets. What is the discounted wholesale price for 1,000 tablets? So first you need to do 112 times 0 0.10 because that's the 5% cent. Captation refers to a contract between the pharmacy and the third-party payer to provide medications to the insured patient. Captation fees, usually based on a monthly basis, are a set amount of money paid to the pharmacy by a third party for a person, whether the person receives a single prescription, multiple prescriptions, or no prescriptions. All prescriptions presented must be filled, even if the cost exceeds the fee provided to the pharmacy. This type of reimbursement may provide the pharmacy with a loss during a one-month period, but can provide a profit over several months, depending on the individual's prescription cost. So then we use this formula, and we'll do example 17.9. The pharmacy accepts a captation fee of $225 for a senior citizen who has multiple monthly standing prescriptions, most of which are available as generic drugs. The wholesale cost for, this, for the monthly drug supplies are $9.50, $27, $65, $42, totaling $143.50. We're going to use that formula up on top. So our captation fee is $225 minus the $143.50 gives us an $81.50 profit for the month. An inventory is a list of all stock available for sale by a business on a specific date. Inventories may be taken at separate times for different sections of a store or pharmacy. Controlled drugs are normally inventoried more often than other medications, depending on the protocol of the particular business and state and federal regulations. In many cases, perpetual inventories are automatically maintained using computer programs. Restocking occurs on a continual basis with this type of system because the computer submits the order to the wholesaler electronically as stock is used or purchased by customers. As medication is sold, it is subtracted from inventory, and when medication is received, it is added to the inventory. A PAR or reorder level is determined by sales history. For seasonal medications such as antihistamines and flu vaccines, the PAR level may need to be increased at certain times of the year. To maintain the inventory flow and minimize the need for extra shelf space, replacements for medication should arrive shortly before they are needed for use. And that formula is the number to reorder is equal to the PAR or reorder level minus the medication in stock. And just a little reminder, a PAR level is set in pharmacies that have the capability of reordering medications automatically as they are used. All right, let's do example 17.10. 
Example 17.10, the PAR level or reorder point for amoxicillin during the winter is 1,500 capsules. Prescriptions for one day show dispensing 750 capsules. The bottle of 1,000 capsules has been opened and appears to be about half full. If the medication is available in 100 capsule, 500 capsule, and 1,000 capsule, what should be ordered? So if we have a 1,500 capsule PAR level that we need to have in the pharmacy at all times, we have a bottle that is about half full. So there's a thousand capsules in a bottle. So 1500 minus 500 means that we need a thousand capsules. Inventory turnover rate is a frequency at which inventory is sold and replaced over a specified time period. The turnover rate is important for setting PAR levels of medications. This number helps the pharmacy determine whether inventory should be increased or decreased, thus controlling the amount of cash that is tied up in inventory. The turnover rate is the total value of inventory ordered over a specific time period, such as one month, six months, or a year, divided by the average value of inventory on hand. The formula for turnover rate is as follows. So the inventory turnover rate is equal to the total purchases over a given time divided by the average inventory value. And we'll do example 17.11. Example 17.11, a pharmacy spends $2,450,000 per year for inventory. The average inventory value is $350,000. Our turnover rate is equal to $2,450,000 divided by, per year, divided by $350,000. We do the math, our turnover rate is seven times per year. Retail pharmacies may require technicians to prepare a daily cash flow report to verify that the payments received during the day balance with the amount of money in the cash drawer. This procedure varies for different pharmacies depending on how the store accounts for coupons, credit card payments, and discounts. Example 17.12. 